Young love feels impenetrable, yet it's fleeting. Two teens who grew up in the 1950s had to learn this the hard way. Karen Lehman and Dennis Venar were high school sweethearts. And after Karen had become pregnant, they wanted to get married. Of course, there were plenty of things that prevented that from happening, and even worse, they were forced to give up their baby. Heartbroken, Karen and Dennis had no choice but to move on, until one day, 50 years later, fate caused them to confront the truth. Hello, wonderful people. I'm Scott Leffler for Wonderbot, and here is 50 years after giving up their baby, high school sweethearts learn what happened to her. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. It's said that you never forget your first love. In the case of Dennis Venar and Karen Lehman, the statement couldn't be any truer. He was a sophomore and she was a freshman in high school when they began dating. When you're young and in love, it feels as if nothing can come between what you have with that someone special. But for Karen and Dennis, someone could come between them, and did. Dennis Venar was your typical American teenager. Held back a year due to a childhood illness, he didn't want anything to hold him back from doing what he wanted ever again. For the rest of his life, everything was achieved with hard work. In high school, he joined the football team and was quite popular among the ladies. But for him, there was only one girl that ever caught his eye. Karen Lehman was not as popular as Dennis was in school. Unlike many high school athletes, Karen was more reserved and focused less on her social life. Her priorities in school were studying and playing the clarinet. Even though they seemed to be opposites, Karen and Dennis did have at least one thing in common, their work ethics. By the end of her freshman year, Karen was a star clarinet player who was sure to get into college early. Karen and Dennis first met in 1958. She was 13 and he was 15. Due to Karen's shy and quiet demeanor, Dennis didn't act on his feelings despite the fact that he was instantly drawn to her. But the two started things slowly and got to know each other over time. Many of the girls were jealous that one of Broughton High School's star football players was occupied with one of the most unlikely people. Throughout their courtship, Dennis made a conscious effort to walk Karen home from school every day. Even if it meant that he'd be late to football practice, he would even carry her clarinet for her. Dennis was clearly smitten, and for Karen, the feeling was mutual. They may have been teens with raging hormones at the time, but the growing love they felt for each other was genuine. Then, suddenly, any parent's worst nightmare came true. When Karen was just 15, she found out that she was pregnant. Dennis did what he thought was logical and proposed to her, but their parents stopped the proposal in its tracks saying that Dennis and Karen were much too young to consider marriage. Karen was sent to a maternity home for young, unwed mothers to take her pregnancy to term and deliver the baby. Back in the 50s and early 60s, a pregnant teen wasn't considered an expectant mother. Instead, she was an unwed mother, which had a serious stigma. Many women who found themselves in situations similar to Karen's were often sent to maternity homes to have their babies. Instead of spending time with the newborn after it was born, the women were forced to give them up for adoption. After coming home from the maternity home, many of these young women had to act as if nothing happened. Karen had no choice but to obey her parents' wishes when they stopped her proposal and sent her to the maternity home. When she went into labor, her parents and Dennis went to the hospital to be there for her. Karen delivered a girl, which she named Denise, after the baby's father. Dennis signed the birth certificate. Everyone held Denise briefly before she was whisked away by social services to be adopted. Against her father's wishes, Karen continued to date Dennis after the baby was born. But after high school, both tried their best to go on their separate paths. Dennis went into the army and was deployed out to Germany. Karen went straight to college at the University of Minnesota, where she studied interior design. Dennis would send letters to Karen's parents' house, but her father intercepted and hid all of them. Both Karen and Dennis figured that the other had forgotten about them. When Dennis returned from the Army, Karen was in her senior year of college. He was 24, she was 22. Their love for each other still strong. They dated again for six months before Dennis proposed again. Karen said yes, but again their dream was thwarted. Her father told them they couldn't get married, and if they did, he would cease paying for Karen's college tuition. Karen and Dennis had no choice but to end things. I went through hell to be with her, but I couldn't. We couldn't be together. 
Dennis recalled in an interview. After they officially ended their relationship, Dennis and Karen went their separate ways. She graduated with a degree in interior design, got married, and had a son. Dennis also married someone else and had three kids of his own. Fifty years passed by as they lived their separate lives, hardly thinking about one another, until one day a question was posed at a party. In 2014, Dennis was at a party where a woman suggested they take turns answering this question. If your doctor gave you 60 days to live, who would be the one person you'd like to meet? While most of the people named politicians, celebrities, or inspiring figures, the first person that came to Dennis's mind was Karen Lehman. She was my very first love, he recalled at the party. The thought stuck with him since that night. A few days later, a friend encouraged Dennis to create a LinkedIn account. He noticed the search bar, the thought of Karen still on his mind. He decided to search for her name. He laid eyes on the third result and said, that's my lady. Dennis instantly reached out to Karen and left a message with her receptionist. He got a call back from Karen a few minutes later. Karen was stunned that Dennis had reached out to her. How did you find me? She asked him, to which he replied, whatever happened to hi, hello, how are you? And how have you been? They caught up with each other's lives. Karen was a widowed mother of an adult son working in Washington state as an interior designer. Dennis was a divorced father of three adults. They then embarked on a three-month digital courtship. Finally, after months of reconnecting online, Dennis flew out to Washington to see Karen for the first time in 50 years. Though they were both nervous, they immediately leaped into each other's arms when they first saw each other. They stayed up all night rekindling their past romance until the subject of marriage came up. They recalled that Dennis had already asked her twice and Karen wondered if Dennis would ask again. When the topic of marriage first came up, Dennis told Karen that he never wanted to marry again since he already had his heart broken. Karen asked Dennis point blank if he would consider asking her to marry him again. I said no because it's like baseball, three times and you're out, Dennis recalled to Harold Ned. But Karen countered his analogy by reminding him, third time's the charm. That night, they decided to get married again. After they finally tied the knot, Karen packed up her things and moved back to Minnesota with Dennis. The high school sweethearts were together at last, but their marital bliss only lasted until a thought popped into Dennis's mind. He remembered their daughter and that he wanted to find her. Karen was not gung-ho about the idea. Though she thought about her long-lost daughter too, she couldn't bear the thought of upending their now adult daughter's life for their own selfish reasons. Dennis was relentless in trying to get Karen to agree to look for their daughter. Each time she was resistant until he said, I found you now and my life will be complete if we found our daughter. The statement was so moving that Karen decided to let Dennis contact the adoption agency. Fortunately, the agency located her easily since the woman had recently contacted them to look at her file. Their daughter was a woman named Jean Voxland who had previously contacted the adoption agency as an adult to get information on her medical history. The 56-year-old mother of three never really took action on trying to locate her biological family throughout her life. But one day, she received a letter from the agency saying that a relative was looking for her. She nearly threw the letter away thinking it was a scam, but it was her husband that convinced her to look at it. After realizing it wasn't a scam, Jean asked the adoption agency for more information. They sent her a letter that Dennis and Karen had written themselves, along with some photos. Jean started crying after seeing people who she looked like for the first time in her life. Soon, Jean, Dennis, and Karen worked with the adoption agency to set up a meeting. It was nerve-wracking for all three of them. In May 2016, Jean braced herself to meet her biological parents, who she was surprised to learn were recently married, and wanted to meet her. For their part, Dennis and Karen were anxious to see the baby they hadn't seen since the day she was born. Would Jean, a mother of three herself, understand why her parents could possibly give her up? It never crossed my mind that I'd have the opportunity to meet both of them and they'd be married, Jean told Harold Nett. For me, having been sought out at age 54 was a bit of a shock. Jean grew up in a small Minnesota town called Hayfield with a wonderful family. Her brother was also adopted. While her adoptive mother has died, her father was still living at the time her biological parents started looking for her. Jean was speechless when she faced her biological parents for the first time. I didn't say much in the beginning. In fact, I didn't do much talking at all, 
she recalled to post bulletin. After the tearful reunion, it was Dennis who did most of the talking. He was the one who told his daughter all about his and Karen's love story and why they had to give her up. Oh boy, that was an emotional day, a very emotional day, they told KARE 11. After hearing about Dennis and Karen's past and how it was her biological grandparents that kept her parents apart, Jean came to terms with why she was put up for adoption. She still had a wonderful upbringing with her adoptive family. But now Jean and her biological parents, Dennis and Karen, felt that divine intervention had brought them all back together. Their story amazed everyone who heard of it, and they eventually decided to go along with something people kept suggesting. Everyone who heard of Jean's and her biological parents' story said they should turn it into a book. In 2017, Dennis and Karen, along with Jean and her husband Andrew, co-authored How Did You Find Me After All These Years, a family memoir about their tale of lost love and reunion. They were now one big happy family. Jean not only gained four new siblings, Dennis and Karen also gained three new grandchildren and some great-grandchildren as well.